Welcome to this Bell Direct monthly update. I'm Julia Lee, an equities strategist with Bell Direct. For the month of September, it's really been a month where the market hasn't done too much at all. We've seen the Aussie share market declining by 1.1%, the mid cap index no different, down about 1.6%, and the small cap index down by 1.1%. In fact, 2017 has really been a market that has been characterized by a sideways movement. And as you can see from this chart, the market has been moving sideways now for an amazing 20 weeks. Unfortunately for the month of September, we end the month testing the downside of that trading range. So it does look like some more weakness might be ahead for the Aussie share market. But look, September is a month where we come out of the August reporting season and learn a few lessons. So let's just recap what we know about reporting season. After reporting season, we know that there's an effect on the market called the post earnings announcement drift or PEED as we tend to call it. And this means that companies that outperform on the day of their earnings announcement, both in terms of their fundamentals and consensus earnings, as well as in terms of share price, tend to outperform the market not only on the day of their report, but also in the weeks after their report and even five months after their report. Does this hold true? Well, let's go back in time and have a look at the February earnings season. Let's have a look at the best and the worst performing there in terms of the February earnings season. You can see that in terms of the best performers in the February earnings season, Seven Holdings was on the top of the list. St. Barbara Mines also doing well. They may have been difficult to buy into these type of companies given that Seven Holdings in the 52 weeks after uh, up to this result had increased by more than a hundred percent in value but what would have happened if you had invested in these companies let's start off by having a look at seven holdings well if you had invested in seven holdings back in february all the way up to september the shares have actually gained uh, around about 60 percent in value st barbara mines we know that this is underpinned by, by the underlying commodity so it's a little bit different because it does tend to move with the gold price but once again you can see that the share price in the february to september period has been higher monodelphus has also done extremely well. It's a nice looking chart and we've seen an increase of more than 50%. So given this, would you be interested in knowing what were the best and the worst performers in the August reporting season? Having a look at the best performers in the August reporting season, top of the list is Mineral Resources, followed by Abacus Property and A2 Milk. Now, given that in the month of August, these shares all had very strong showings and a very strong performance, would you be interested in seeing how the shares have performed in the last 30 sessions? Let's start off and have a look at the 30 day chart for mineral resources. And although we've seen a pullback, you can see that the shares are significant higher in that 30 day period. Well, what about Abacus Property? Once again, share price looking extremely healthy over the last 30 trading days. And finally, looking at A2 Milk, and it's a very good looking chart indeed. So it does look like this reporting season in the weeks after the result, we have seen the best performers once again performing quite well on the market, despite the market being stuck in a sideways range. For the month of September, let's have a look at some of the best as well as the worst performers on the list. The best performer, Galaxy Resources, followed by Beach Petroleum and A2 Milk. On the flip side, having a look at the worst performer list, and this is quite an interesting list. On this list are stocks like Main Pharma, Vocus, which also um, coincidentally uh, were on the list of the worst performers for the month of August as well. So it does look like some of those fallen angels have continued to fall in the month of September. Looking forward though, what can we expect from the market? Well, I think if we have a look at the market, what we have seen is a downturn in terms of the healthcare space, especially related to private health insurance and those declining numbers that we've seen over the last couple of quarters. This has impacted negatively on stocks like Ramsey Healthcare as well as Healthscope and the latest Medicare statistics do show that perhaps diagnostic companies like Primary Healthcare could also be coming under pressure as well. So I'd be avoiding some of these healthcare stocks for the time being in case some of these problems are structural. We have seen a pullback in some of the base metal prices like copper but look I think this is an opportunity and I think it's an opportunity because we're seeing global growth levels at 
their highest level in six years. In fact, in 2018, the OECD is predicting that the 45 economies it surveys will all see growth and 33 out of the 45 economies will see an increased growth rate compared to 2017. So I think the growth picture is intact. I think it is time to be overweight some of those growth areas and be underweight defensives, which should uh, underperform in the type of market that we're in. And in terms of the global outlook, well, the US is looking overvalued. I'd be underweight US equities, but be overweight Euro with the Eurozone starting to fire up quite well and be market weight the Australian share market. So that's it from me. That's the September market update. All in all, we've seen the market moving sideways. And yet despite this, we've seen it really being a stock pickers market with some very strong performance from companies that have been in the upgrade cycle and have outperformed during the August reporting season. I'm Julia Lee from Bell Direct. Hope to see you next time.